What's up everybody? The Networkberg here. Hope you're doing well. So this isn't uh, like the normal setup where I'm usually like uh, in this video we'll be discussing this and that. This is uh, my first live stream. So I'd like to thank you for tuning in if you are tuning in. Um, and I do hope we have a lot of fun together. So this first live stream, I, I, I don't want to quickly just throw everybody in the deep end and show everybody all this hardcore networking stuff that you can do. This will be just more of a discussion and just getting into the groove of things as well as for me to get into live streaming since I'm not a big live streamer and maybe I'm just also building up my confidence because this is a bit of a scary thing for me. I usually just make the videos. It's generally during the, the day and um, yeah, so this will be my first actual live stream. So what I want to cover in this live stream is actually setting up EVNG um, Community Edition on a, a PC or a server or a laptop or something so that you as a network engineer can have a lot of power to learn any type of networking that you want. Because one thing that I, I think a lot of people don't understand about networking is many of the concepts apply to any vendor. So if you are good at Juniper, then if you move to a different vendor, like let's say Cisco or Huawei or um, Mikrotik, the, the concepts still apply. Like how BGP works is the same for any type of device. It's not just um, this thing that's just miraculously different on somebody else's hardware. It, it still works with Hello Packets and you need to establish a peer and have AS numbers and all that stuff. But I don't want to dive into that now. I just want to set up Eve NG Community Edition, which is completely free so that you can start your networking journey with me so that if you've watched my channel before, you've seen me work on EVNG and I get a lot of questions. What is the software? How do I install it? All that stuff. And I do have a video. It's in the description already how to install EVNG. But I want to just work through it in this live stream and do like a very small lab with you guys. So let's get into it. First things first, we need to download the image or the ISO from the EVNG website. So we're going to go to eve-ng.net and this will open up the eve website and in the EVNG website there's a lot of cool things that you can see but we want to just firstly navigate to download and then from download here are your options you've got the professional edition which is paid for and it looks nice i use the professional edition but it is a little bit pricey so you might want to just consider first working with the community edition if you want to get used to eve and then going into the pro edition when you're ready um, one thing that is very nice about the Pro Edition, every Black Friday, there's pretty much a good deal. You get a nice discount and you also get some extra months uh, on the product. But I'm just going to install the uh, Community Edition. So I'm going to scroll down. Here's the Community Edition. And you can see this is actually quite a few versions behind as well. But it's, again, just free software. So what we want to do is we want to get the ISO. And I can just grab it from this download link. I've actually already downloaded the ISO so that I don't waste any bandwidth while streaming. Um, but we're just going to act like this is the first time that I'm doing this. So I would just accept the cookies and I would download the file. And once the file is downloaded, I've got the ISO on my machine. So let me just navigate there. I'll go to my downloads and then you see there's my Eve 2017-1007, which is the community edition, um, which is that ISO that I downloaded. Now I'm just going to open up VMware Workstation. Uh, this is player, which is also free so that we don't waste any money. And again, that's the nice thing about network emulators. It's all virtual equipment. You can spin up as much of the equipment as you want and you won't break anything. So here in Workstation player, I've got my EVNG Pro, which I typically make my videos off of on YouTube, but I'm just going to install this community edition. So I'm just going to go into file new virtual machine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, we, I will install the operating system later because we're going to load it off of that ISO we have. It is Linux and it is Ubuntu 64, but we're going to use. So I'll just go next. So I'm also just interested um, to see what's happening in the chat maybe. So if you guys want to chat, feel free. The chat window is there. Um, but I'll go into this. We can give the virtual machine a name. I'll just call this maybe uh, Eve NG Community. 
And this location is quite important because this is where your disk and your files is gonna be saved. So try and find a disk that you've got uh, some space on. So I might just install this on my F drive. I'll make a new folder for it and let's call this uh, Eve ng community. Cool. Now I can just okay that, go next. It's asking you for the disk size. So I'll leave this on the minimum for now. Uh, if you do have more space available, you can assign a bigger drive for EVNG. It is actually good to just do this from the beginning. We can leave this as is, go next. And now we want to customize the hardware. So when we customize the hardware, <laughs> thanks, I'll, I'll, I'll work on the Ansible. I've actually done some Ansible on Router OS, um, but I'll make some videos and streams about it as well. I'm, I, I love Ansible, by the way. So let's um, check what details we want. We've got some memory here. So we just want to set it as high as we possibly can. Um, a good tip that I usually give people is you could go into your task manager maybe and just look at your performance. And from here, it gives you a good indicator of how much memory and CPU and all stuff you have. So I'm just going to look, I've got 32 gigs available to me. So I might just push this up to, let's say 16. But if you run it at like four gig, that's fine as well. It's just not going to be amazing. Um, you might run into some resource issues. Next part is my CPU. So I'm just going to look, I've got six cores, but I've got 12 logical cores. So for the processors, I can actually assign 12. And now the very important bit that people usually miss when they install EVE the first time, you need to tick virtualize Intel VT-X um, or AMD-V. This is very important and this you also need to enable from your BIOS. So I can't just show you that now, unfortunately, because we're in a live stream. Uh, but in your BIOS, there is probably an option to enable that. It is a lot of the times enabled by default, but if it isn't, you can find that in your BIOS to enable it. Once you've done that, you can actually just come here in workstation player and tick this and it won't give you any issues. Now for the next bit, we are just going to go into our CD-ROM, our fake CD-ROM, and we're going to use an ISO image. So remember that ISO I downloaded a little bit earlier. I'm just going to browse to it. I'm gonna find that in my downloads and I'm going to use that in the CD-ROM. My network adapter, I'll leave this as NAT. So this will just give the uh, host access through my network and it will be natted through my network you'll, you'll see in a bit and that's about it that we need so i could close this i could finish it and then we'll see the community edition that i just created so i'm going to play this and it's going to start up and you'll see like a purplish screen asking english so this is actually the setup disk that's running so we're just quickly going to run through the setup so here you can choose your language i'm just going to choose english now you get various options. So I'm going to use install Eve VM because I am running a VM. If you install Eve bare, that's basically uh, installing it like on a physical server so that the server is your Eve server. But let's just install this as an Eve VM. And we're gonna get a few more prompts just now. So still English. I'm going to select South Africa because that's where I'm from, but Depending on your time zone, you can select wherever you're from and it will just match that. And now it's going to start copying some of the files and such for the installation. So this is probably the longest bit, but typically the installation takes between, let's say 10 and 20 minutes, depending on your system, obviously. Like if you've got a very slow system, it might take a bit longer. It might even take an hour. Um, but if it's a quick system and you've got uh, lots of resources, it will be pretty quick. All right, now it's just busy installing. We're just waiting for the next prompt now, actually. So <laughs> sorry about that. It's just the nature. And there's some stuff I want to show you guys while this is installing, but I, I want the actual setup to start running before we go through a few other things. Okay, so we can give the thing a name now. So I'll just leave this as even G. And we're going to proceed again in a bit. Yes, my time zone is correct. And we just wait. Oh, <laughs> I've realized something. Um, I'm actually gonna put on some 
background music i hope you guys don't mind if it's too loud just let me know and i can turn it off um it is from a, a game that i enjoy playing that maybe you recognize the music if you recognize the music you could just say uh, if you know where it's from okay so we're not going to do any proxy so it's just busy installing or grabbing all the files but th this isn't not like the actual install now this is just uh, preparing the installation it's it's kind of like when you install windows and it's just getting those files to a spot where it can actually quickly bring up everything almost there uh, we can install security updates automatically you can also leave it on no but it, it's fine i'll just do automatic updates uh, sorry i just want to bring up the chat again cool all righty almost there i promise <laughs> like this is really the the rds bit but it's also pretty simple if you think about it i just click yes a bunch of times and now i'm installing an evm installing grub almost there finished the installation but it's not finished you'll see now in a second we're just going to continue this and for the people that aren't aware of evng it was made by Uldis and elaine and they are amazing people to the eve community they, they they're like the ceos of the company but they're always there helping people they've actually helped me with my first setup when i got um evng pro installed so defender um Pro is more or less uh, for people wanting to teach and explain things because you can set up labs specifically. Uh, you can also add things like, I'll, I'll show it to you as well in a, a little bit later maybe, but you, you can like set up these tasks for people that they need to do. So it's a very nice tool that you could use to maybe gauge the skill of somebody if, if, you, if you're interviewing them. Um, it also comes with extra features like you can run Wireshark uh, through EVNG Pro uh, so you can see what's happening with all of the traffic through Wireshark. You can also make the lab look way nicer. And one of the small annoyances with even G community, you need to turn off all the nodes. Not all of them, but a node needs to be off before you can connect any like cable to it. Where with Pro, you can just connect and you can start working and do everything. So Pro is a lot faster. It's a lot nicer, but it's not required if you want to learn networking community is totally fine if you want to get into networking uh, specifically with the type of videos that i make with micritic because micritic's image even though it's trial um, it's very easy to acquire and you can learn whatever you want whereas with cisco and juniper it's, it's usually a mission to get the images and the software which is very off-putting to people so that's why i actually recommend just learning with uh, micritic because it's so easy to pick up a certain skill Oh, but the, the setup's actually busy. So this is the, the boring part. Um, so we can leave that to run in the background. Like this will just take a few minutes. So while that's happening, I just want to show you guys on the EVNG side, very important for you to go to the documentation. So if you're doing the setup yourself, um, you can go to the installation. Here it will give you some of the tips how to do the stuff, but I would just recommend going to the cookbooks. So here's the community cookbook. And this will cover mostly everything in here. You'll, you'll see stuff like uh, recommended system specs, uh, how to use it. There, there we go, there's the specs that they recommend you to use. Um, but what I recommend people to come here for is in the documentation, there's these how-tos. And the how-tos will save you so much time because these are all the appliances that you can import into EVNG. So you could learn Alcatel, Arista, that's so cool, um, Aruba, Cisco, obviously, um, Huawei, Juniper, PFSense, so some Linux stuff, uh, Silverpeak, SonicWall, I'm not really a fan, but it's fine. You can even bring up Fortinet. Uh, you can bring up your own VMs in the VM, which is crazy. So you could uh, bring up like a, another Linux VM in Community Edition even. 
install Ansible on that. And you could use that for automation. I've done that before and it, it works totally fine. But very important with the how to's, um, just come here, find what you're looking for. I might look for Mikrotik. There's the Mikrotik cloud router. I open it up and here's a short tutorial how to quickly bring the appliance into EVNG. Um, I just quickly want to go to buy, even though I, 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 I'm, I'm not like advertising it, but I just want to show you if you are interested in professional, like here it will show you um, how to get professional. And if you do this buy now, you could basically see what, what it is. But it is, like I said, quite pricey for a single person. But maybe if you run it through your company, um, that helps a lot as well. <laughs> Tell your boss, hey, I want a place where I could upskill myself and everybody else. And I'm totally sure, uh, I'm certain they'll go for it. Like my boss was even fine with that. So I could highly recommend trying to run it past your boss. Okay, let's quickly see how far is our Eve. Eve is actually up. We're not totally done yet, but here you see it's giving us the IP address for the Eve server. It's telling us the Eve logon, which is root. Password is Eve. Now it's asking us, what do you want the root password to be? So I'm just going to leave that as Eve. I'm going to leave the host name as eve-ng.net or, okay. Uh, the DNS, we can leave that. Here we can set it as a static IP. So type in the IP address for the management network. So let's make that 192.168.74. Let's make it one zero. And the subnet is a slash 24. And the gateway is going to be dot two. It's typically always going to be dot two. You might get a different uh, octet here. Like it might be 100 or 128 or something that might change for you. But in my example, it gave me 74 and my gateway is dot two. Type in the IP primary DNS server. Let's just make that Google. I'm not going to use a secondary. I'm not going to use any NTP. We can use uh, direct connection. That's fine. And there we go. <laughs> Done and dusted. So this is now even G community edition that's been installed. It's going to boot up. Let's just see if the IP address is there. Because remember, I made that IP.10 and it is.10. So if I log in here, root Eve, I'm on the Eve server. Let's just check do we have access to the internet? We can ping Google's DNS. That's great. So now to test and see if it's actually working, let's go into our browser. And with Community Edition, you only connect onto HTTP. So that's also a difference with uh, Pro, is you'd be connecting on HTTPS. So we're going to connect to 192.168.74.10. The username is admin and the password is Eve. I will use the native console. So this will allow me to use stuff like PuTTY or um, RDP or whatever. And here we are, EVNG. We're in the section where we can set up the lab and all that stuff. So before we set up a lab, let's just import an appliance. And I'm going to go back into that documentation going to go back to the how to's. I'm going to find Mikrotik again because that is what I want to import. And here we have the details. So we'll just go to mikrotik.com for such download. And if you work with Mikrotik, this is quite a familiar screen to you. So it's router OS. So we're just going to scroll down until we find the CHR cloud hosted router. And we're going to find the raw disk image. So the raw disk image, I typically re recommend getting the stable version. Long term is definitely the best option. Stable is typically fine. Um, and here you can see you could even get the 7.1 betas and test out those features. But let's install this one. So I'm going to download it. I'm going to save it. I think I've also have a, that image. Maybe I don't, but it's busy downloading. And it's finished its download. So I'm just going to go into my downloads folder. Here's the CHR. Let's just quickly extract it. All right, so it's been extracted. So let's follow the guide. So let's act like I'm a new guy. I want to import my appliance for the first time. So I've downloaded the image. Use any 
archivator program. Okay, that's fine. We've already unzipped it as well. Now it says SSH to your e-server and create a directory for the node. So that we can do straight from here. So I'm just going to do what they tell me. I'm going to make dir slash opt slash unit lab slash add on camo and then what the name is. So it's lowercase microtech, very important. It needs to match whatever is in the how to. It's, it's typically like just a lowercase of what the OS is. But here it's microtech and then after the dash, it's less important. So here we can just make it the version, which was six. I think 648.1, yes, 6.48.1. All right, directory's been created. So what we can do now is we need to upload the image to the directory. So I'm going to use WinSCP to achieve this. So I'm opening up WinSCP. I'm not going to update anything right now. So we're connecting to 192.168.74. Dot 10 on port 22 the username is root and the password is your eve password so mine is still eve so i'm just going to log in i'm going to accept the key and there we go i can just go up in the directory and remember i created a directory in slash opt unit lab add-ons camo microtech there's our directory so i can just go back to my extracted folder and I can just copy this straight in and now it's there <laughs> cool so I'm going to go back into my eve console yes it does open ssh by default no so this is the root user that I used okay so let's quickly just follow the script still so i've uploaded the image using filezilla next thing we're going to do is we're just going to change to that directory so cd opt unit lab add-ons camu and then microtik so now we're in that folder and then what it wants us to do is basically just change the name so the name is going to be we're mv space and then the image which is chr-6.48.1 image and we're going to change this to hda.qcow2 and then lastly but this is typically not needed you just need to fix the permissions so you just type opt unit lab wrappers unl wrapper minus a fix permissions done so if we go back to our eve lab Firstly, let's create a new lab. So we're going to add a lab. We can call this our first lab. You can assign version numbers. You can give it an author if you want, the uh, network perk. You can give it a description. Lab to create some routers and get internet access. And here, even though I said you can do tasks and stuff in Pro, um, like this is very minimal in community this task thing uh, it, it's really more like one set up a router but uh, it, it's not the same as in pro so let's save that so now we've got a canvas so if you've ever watched any of my videos this should be a very very familiar canvas because this is where we drag and drop our nodes onto well we don't even need to drag and drop them we can just right click and there's a node button and then from the nodes, any of these grayed out nodes are devices that you haven't uh, got the image for, but you can find it if you're smart or if you go onto the vendor's page and just download it from there. But if it's blue like this, it means that you do have the image, which was the Mikrotik one that we imported. So let's import this Mikrotik router OS. You can specify how many nodes you want to import. So I'm just going to do one for now. What's the version? The icon you can give it a name so i might just make that r so any other routers that i add would become r one two three we get a cpu uh, so the cpu i'll leave on one the ram is 256 ethernet ports i might suggest making that more but it doesn't matter four ports five ports yes the the video will be 
available on YouTube afterwards. I will save this and you guys can watch it afterwards to rewind and see what's happening. Okay, so I'm going to just save this. I'm not sure about that digital IT. I'll have to check that in the video afterwards and we can try and figure it out. Okay, so now we have a router and we can start the router by right clicking it, clicking on start. And that is going to be a real cloud hosted router. It's a real Mikrotik. It's just in a virtual environment, but it works like any other Mikrotik router. So any other devices running that software version, it's the same. You could even set this up to connect to a real router outside the network and make a VPN tunnel and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, but we've right clicked, we've started the device. Let's open it. So here I can choose an application. So I'm just going to use Putty. And now it's asking me the login details, which will be the defaults, which is admin and blank. Do I want to see the license? I can say yes, but I will say no. And as you see, it's a Mikrotik router. It has all of the stuff that any other Mikrotik router will have. But I'm just quickly going to close this, shut down the router. So let's stop it. And then what we can do is when we right click, you get the option for network. And then from network, your management network is your cloud zero. And with cloud zero, it's basically like your internet, your real internet to get into the router. So I could get to the router from my actual computer. Yes, Roman, it, it, is, it is possible to make a lab for multi-cost traffic in even G. It's very possible. Um, there's actually labs on the internet for that as well. Okay, so what I've got here is I'm just going to connect that management network to my router one on Ethernet one. You can choose which interface. I'm going to save that. And then if I turn this router back on, if I look at the putty again, It might take a second, there we go. Admin blank. So if I go into the IP address and I print that, so the CHRs actually have by default a DHCP client configured as well. So Ether1 has DHCP enabled, so it's actually picked up an IP address automatically. And I might have internet access already from the device. I do. Okay, perfect. So this router now is actually on the internet or not, not the actual internet, but it's, it can get to the internet from my actual network. And what's cool is if I go into Wimbox, if I look at my neighbors, it picks up that virtual MAC address through my virtual NIC that I've configured for that Mikrotik router. So I can Winbox to this Mikrotik like any other Mikrotik. Um, yes, you can run router OS on bare metal, the bare metal, for EVNG is essentially just you installing EVNG on a physical server. And it might be a lot more powerful than me running it on my desktop computer because you have way more resources that you can plug into it. You can, you can have 128 gigs of RAM and 32 core processors, and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Okay, so I'm just going to connect onto this Mikrotik using the MAC address. And now I'm in that Mikrotik on on, on Winbox. So this is working like any other router that I would connect <laughs> for the very first time. What I'd like to do is maybe just turn off the DHCP client. So I'm just going to disable that, remove it. And this is going to remove the IP address. So let's just add a static IP for this router 192.168.74. Let's make it dot 20 slash 24 on the ether one interface because that is my management network. Because remember my Eve server is dot 10, um, my NAT gateway is dot two and my actual computer is dot one. So what I can do now is I can add a route. Let's just add a default route out to 192.168.74.2. And before I apply it, I just want you to see like that I'm not tricking you or anything. If I do a ping to 8.8.8, .8 .8, it's not working because there's no routes. 
if I apply this, since I've got a default route now and my gateway is set to 192.168.74.2, if I run the ping, it is actually breaking out. Uh, I'm just trying to see. Oh, you want to load the router OS. Um, but you, you can do that. Uh, you, c you can do that. I, I, I see what you're getting at. So yes, you could install the router OS image on an actual bare metal, uh, like a Linux box with its own eth ethernet ports and stuff that you could install. And it will work as a router just on a big like Linux server. So that's actually very normal. It's, it's not something that's unheard of because it scales a lot better than a 1072 or even the newer routers because again you can allocate as much resources as you want to it so you can do that that's very very normal okay so we've got a router that's got some internet access uh, let's maybe assign some dns because we need dns if we want to be able to ping host names so if i ping www.google.com that's working awesome so let's quickly just extend this network a little bit let's stop the router because as i said on community edition you just need to stop a node when you want to do anything on it and let's add a, another node and this could be a virtual pc so this comes with um, community edition but this is a very basic host this isn't like a real computer or anything oh and that's also something nice on evng pro is you get a docker with it so the docker is already like a linux server that does everything that you can think of it's got ansible on it as well and it's very useful for testing things but this virtual pc i'm going to import is just like a very dumb computer and what i want to do with this dumb computer is let's maybe add another network and we're going to fake a switch with a bridge so this bridge essentially works almost like a hub so i'm just going to add one of them and then I can connect my virtual PC to this fake switch. But if you imported a real, like, like a Cisco viral switch, which I have the images for, then you could practice your switching with that as well. And then I'm just going to add the switch to my router on Ether2. And let's start the devices again. And both of the devices are starting. So I just quickly want to jump back onto Winbox because I think people like seeing things in Winbox, but that's what I love about Mikrotik as well. The, the, the command line is really useful and very powerful. So let's just close all the windows. Let's go into our IP addresses. Let's just assign a LAN address quickly to Ether2. So 192.168.20.1 will be the router on Ether2. And then for my virtual PC, let's just open it up with PuTTY. And there you see it's a very like basic, dumb computer. If I question mark, it, it gives you some of the stuff you can do on it. So all that we want to do is run IP, assign an IP address. So 192.168.20, let's make it .2 slash 24. And then you need to specify the gateway, 192.168.20.1. And what I want us to test quickly is to see, can we ping the Mikrotik router? And we can ping the Mikrotik router. Let's quickly see, can we ping 8.8.8.8? .8 so that we can't ping. So this, this might have been a fun example where I can ask people, why do you think um, we can't ping out from this virtual PC out to the internet? You can almost imagine this was your first Mikrotik, you brought it home. You've connected it, your service provider's given you internet access, you, you're configuring your LAN, and now why am I not getting internet access out from my LAN? Is there some weird reason? Is there something that I'm not doing right? And I already know the answer, but I just, I'm, I'm just curious to see if uh, you guys maybe have an idea what, what might be missing on the router to give this virtual PC access. Yes, that's correct. Great job, guys. Great job. That's correct. Let's quickly jump on the router. And let's go to IP firewall. And let's just add a natural. Plus it. 
we're just going to add a very basic natural it's a source nat our out interface is ether1 because that is the interface that's going to the internet and we can just masquerade so i'm applying and now that i've applied it if i go back to my virtual pc let's try and see if we can ping out again <laughs> cool so we've actually built a pretty very like basic network where we've got a computer with a very dumb switch to a router giving internet access um, there's so much more we can do to build off of that i mean let's act like this is the mtc and a stuff almost so i'm just going to shut down that computer quickly i wonder if that computer can do dhcp let's try that so let's just go into our ip let's set up a dhcp server quickly let's do it the cheap and easy way click the dhcp setup Interface we want it on is Ether2. The address space we want it on is 192.168.20.0/24. That's correct. The gateway is 20.1. And I don't know if you guys are aware, but Mikritix is pretty interesting with um, your address pool. So typically, it's giving addresses out in reverse. So 254 would be the first IP it assigns, not dot two. So let's assign this pool. DNS service we can leave as that we can leave the least time on 10 hours and there we go we've installed a DHCP server as well let's see if we can do DHCP with this PC I'm not totally sure if it can do the DHCP I would like it if it can let's see so it, it should have actually just gotten the DHCP already so let's just try and ping 192.168.20.1 no so this isn't gonna work but that's fine i mean if i had a different pc i could have connected like an actual pc or the eve docker it would have uh, done that it can let me check let's go back into this uh little pc thingy let's just cancel that Oh, now it's being difficult. Let's try that. Oh, that's what's being IP address DHCP. Let's see. Now it doesn't have the option, but like I said, it's it's like a oh there we go there we go IP DHCP. Nice. <laughs> that is awesome. Thanks, Lacro. That was cool, huh? That was really nice. Let's quickly see, can we ping 192.168.20.1? We can ping it. Okay, so the DHCP works. Fantastic. Does the thing even get DNS, I wonder? I don't think so. It does. Okay, no, that's fantastic. Okay, so this little um, machine is actually working very nicely. Awesome. That is great. Okay, so I'm going to close this machine off. So this is actually very basic, small network. And I know that most people that's in network engineering, when you start out, like this is awesome to do. But my goal with the channel is to try and teach people networking as a whole, like the whole picture. I want you to see more than just the router. I want you to see the routers behind that router. So um, if I go on to Google quickly, because this has always been amazing to me. This has always been so cool. And this is why I love networking. It's, it's, it's so next level. So if we search for something like um, map of the internet, and we look at the images, doesn't that look crazy? Doesn't that look amazing? I mean, if, if you look at all of these dots that are connected with each other those are routers it's, it's it's like a map of the whole internet and it's so crazy for me when every time i look at this and imagine this is actually what's happening when we are working on the, the internet on the network it, it, and it's crazy because it looks quite similar to something else um map of the universe uh well i don't know if it looks like the universe universe 
but it reminds me like a lot about and it's, it's the same if you like look at like brain cells or whatever how connected everything is and that makes me think like how almost alive the internet is all of these things are able to connect and again my goal with the channel is to help you learn not the whole picture because that would almost be impossible for me to teach you i don't think there's one person that understands the whole picture but i can at least help you understand how portions of the picture work and how everything at the end of the day interconnects so very vital and key word there is interconnect so all of these systems they have what we call autonomous system numbers and they speak to each other using this cool protocol called bgp and they're sharing all of their network information and it's making everything work so it lets us as the human race actually advance so much so that's why i'm very proud to be a network engineer and anybody else that is one as well I, please guys it's so cool it's really cool if, if you're just starting out and you want to get into network engineering it's probably one of the coolest jobs you can do right now um and that also leads me to one more statement i want to make about network engineering it is also okay for you to forget things um <laughs> for me i forget like you saw I, I didn't even know you could add the ip dhcp on that little server um if you forget things in networking it, don't sweat it it happens if you forget how stp works or if you forget how ospf works if you forget how anything works networking works a lot like programming it's there, there's like references that you use so it's okay for you to if, if you're not working with something the whole time if you need a bit of insight just go and look at the reference docs again and you'll figure it out so quickly and that's also what's cool about micritic is their toc because this thing has examples for everything you're right digital it like that's actually an old picture it's actually evolved even more which is crazy if you think about it rpki oh okay um that might be something we could have a look at there's actually a, a lecture that i was well not a lecture that i was a part of but it was more of a conference where uh, isoc uh, the internet society was discussing uh, the RPKI. And I think if I can find a link for it, I'll put it in the description of the video, just so that you guys can um, get some info on that as well. But here's the Micritic training like wiki, and it literally has anything that you can think of. So whenever you get stuck with anything and you need a reference like material, come here, look for what you're struggling with. You could find um, VLANs on wireless, uh, fast path how does that work vrrp uh, there's anything bgp there's bfd mme I, I don't even work with that so there's also <laughs> like uh, something interesting that's one downside about micritic though is if i look at the routing protocols i really wish they would bring in isis but um, maybe they will with the next uh, release but I, I have my doubts about that. All right, so I'm just going to close the manual. And now that we've created a little lab, I might shut this down. So we can just select all of the nodes. We can right click, we can say stop selected. Uh, Boshan, I do have a video on WireGuard already, but I can in a future live stream probably go over that as well. So I'm aiming to try and keep the live streams within like an hour time frame, And I'm not sure if we're going to, to make that. No, ISIS isn't Cisco proprietary. Um, you can get it on a few other things. So Cisco proprietary is uh, the EIGRP, which they've also kind of made open but nobody really uses it except Cisco and their exams. Like, I think most uh, IGPs that you'll see is either the ISIS or OSPF, but f since many people in WISPs use Micritix, that's probably the thing that you'll see the most. Okay, I'm just going to close this lab. I'm going to sign out and I might just shut down the EVE server quickly. So shut down minus H now. and 
my my network's gone so i can't use this anymore but i might just want to quickly sign into my evng pro since i oh no <laughs> i've made it oops so i've renamed my pro let's just see i think this is my pro <laughs> embarrassing just wait for this to start up i'll see in a second if it's the pro edition or not I could also just quickly check here. So it's still there, so there's no issue there. Oh, why is it not starting? Let's just power that off. Close that, open a new one. Great, this is fantastic. This is why I wanted to have these labs as well, because yes, this, this has to be my pro station, just because of the amount of resources I've assigned. I'm just quickly going to rename that. Why is it Eve NG Pro? Play this virtual machine. Remind me later. There we go. Now it's starting. I don't know if it was because both the names were the same. That was really strange. Okay, so there we go. It's my Eve NG Pro. So I'm just quickly going to log on with that IP 192. And again, this is now going to be HTTPS 192.168.74.128. Warning, potential security risk. Perfect, that's what I want. <laughs> Advanced, accept risk and continue. And there we see it's the EVNG Pro. So I can log on with my username admin, password Eve. I'm going to use the native console. I just like the native console. And then here's this lab that I created because actually my computer crashed uh, earlier this year and I lost my Eve Pro server and I had to reinstall everything. So now I've just got this one lab. And if you've been on any of my recent videos, uh, it might look familiar. So this is like a lab covering a few things. There's a whole MPLS network here. VRFs, I'm trying to do some VPLS with BGP signaling here at the bottom. So once I get that ready, I'll make a video about it as well. But as you can see already, there's a big difference with um, Community and Pro, just in how it looks. So with uh, Community, you can't do stuff like make your links curve like this. Um, you can't make these rounded squares. So with the rounded edges, the squares are either like a flat square or just a circle and you can't change stuff like this is actually a pretty cool feature on pro is edit quality so you could actually make the link better or worse well it's already as good as it gets but you could add like packet loss on the link to simulate something um, or emulate that's the better word because maybe you're studying cisco and you want to do something with ipsla and you want to set something like if there's this amount of packet loss switch to a different link this is where you can emulate that. You could actually add more packet loss to a link and now the link will perform poorly and you could see in real time what the differences are. Yes, the free version does unfortunately have a limit. It's like 64 uh, objects or so in one lab. But I mean, you're gonna be labbing very hard if it's um, to get to that size. I mean, I've, I've created some pretty big networks in Community Edition, but yes, that is definitely one of the restrictions. So Pro, you don't have that massive, like you can add way more nodes, but it is again in the documentation. So if you go to this documentation and you look at the cookbooks, all of the info is there, like how many nodes you can add. Um, here's also some of the changes, because remember I showed you when I created the lab in the Community Edition, there was this lab tasks where it's pretty basic. So here you can actually create real tasks, um, task one, and you could set like stuff in the task. Like uh, you could say router A is unable to create a BGP, peer, BGP session to router C. What is the issue? And you could save that. And then when a student logs in, well, that's what we call them. When they look at the tasks, um, 
they'll see the task and it would help them just understand where they're looking for what. And you can add cool stuff like pictures in the task or as you see this cloud that I added uh, in Pro, you can't do that in community. Lives uh, or Pro's also got this little chat room. Uh, I don't really use this stuff. I'm really using this for myself, but the functions are there. Um, they did add this dark mode on community as well. So it's not exclusive. It used to be exclusive to Pro. But yeah, Pro's just, it looks a lot nicer. Oh, here's something I didn't explain to some people. So I, I just want to start up a few things here quickly. Let, let's just start up the side of the network. So at home, yes, I do use a Microtech just for very basic com connectivity, but it's really simple setup at my house. It's a fiber to the home that comes in and it just connects to my router and I'm not really doing anything on that router. Um, <laughs> so to say, I've got way more stuff running on the virtual labs than on the actual router, which is funny, but I mean, I, I'm not like running any services off my router, so it's not really needed. So this is something that you can do on community edition as well. And that is the startup configs. Yes, well, but I, I agree. I actually have a plan to explain communities a little bit. Um, it is a part of the agenda, so to speak, and I want to make a video on it relatively soon, like what communities do and how you like import and export the stuff. Okay, but here with the startup config section, you could actually specify specific details on when a device is starting up. So if I go back here, you see this LAN2 PC which is the Eve Docker that I was talking about. So if I open this up, you'll see this is way nicer than that other Linux machine, because this is an actual like machine now and it can do anything. It's got Ansible on it as well. So I will probably use this to make some videos on Ansible, uh, ping 8888. All right, cool. So the DNS just isn't set. There is currently not uh, any links that I'm aware of. I mean, what I would suggest we do is maybe reach out to uh, Uldis or Elaine and ask them, are they gonna run any different like discount coupons again? And if they do, maybe they could um, do something like a referral program. So if I refer some of you guys for Pro, you could get a discount, but l let's, let's talk to them about that first. I'm, I'm not sure if they'll even allow that. Like I said, usually, um, every November there's the Black Friday and then you get a pretty good deal and that's when I bought my pro license so on the startup configs if I go to that LAN 2 PC you could actually write code like what you want to be put on the machine when it starts up for the first time so in that LAN 2 PC's case I'm actually adding an IP address and I'm adding a route so that it gets breakout which is pretty cool so that means on your other devices you could it's, it's not doing the same as, as Ansible would, but you could make a dummy config and import it into the devices when it starts up so that there's no hassle. So that's actually quite nice. But this is again, not limited to Pro. This is on Community Edition as well. Let's see, is there anything under more actions? Nothing special really. So yeah, if, if you wanted to know, Pro is just more catered towards like companies, whereas community it's fine for learning as a single individual i just like pro because it looks really nice and it fits for what i want to use it for awesome intercultural user interface design of router os yeah <laughs> so i like winbox and i like the CLI. I mean, let's just jump onto the CLI of a router because again, this is very similar to any other router you would work with. You've got your IP addresses that you can just print and you can show the detail IP or let's go into routing BGP peer print detail. So it can show you all of the information that you would get on a Cisco or a Juniper. Um, you just need to know where to look really. And again, router OS is very like 
I'd say user friendly actually because you can tab, you can question mark, you can get to anything that you want just by looking at the beginning of something. So if I go IP question mark, I can see what the next options are. And it's literally going to be the same as on Winbox. So if I quickly look at my neighbors, I should see one neighbor. I'm just going to connect to this neighbor, which is this uh, ASBR that I've got on the network. And remember I did like an IP address print or detail and everything's here. Same with the BGB peers. So there's some peers that's actually going to go to some other fake ISPs. And this is where we will be discussing stuff like um, BGP communities, because I've, I feel like that's way more useful on a um, ISP level than just like doing it for fun. Yeah, <laughs> cool. So I think that is as much as I can show about the initial setup for EVNG, why it's useful, why it's cool. Um, yeah, it, it is a bit overwhelming, like getting into any new type of thing. But that's why I want to um, I want to say ease your minds, guys. If you're getting into Mikrotik and you're coming from a networking background, you will adjust to it. So I myself, I've passed the MTC INE in 2019 and I only started working with Mikrotik in 2018. So in less than a year, I was able to get the, let's say the top level certification. And the whole reason behind it isn't because I'm super smart or anything. It's, it's because I've worked for quite a while in the ISP industry and I've worked a lot with BGP on different Cisco systems. So if you understand the networking concepts, you will be able to bring it over to any new equipment. It doesn't matter who the vendor is. Um, even going into Huawei, which I did this year, it's it's the same. Like maybe the commands are a little bit different, but if it's not proprietary things that you're working on, it's basically the same hardware. It, 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 it uses a standard to communicate, to work. Course recommendations with Mikrotik so um the best thing that i can recommend for you if you want to get into mikrotik is to reach out to a certified trainer uh, typically they have these classrooms that they run even though it's a bit hard now with the you know the, the situation in the world uh, but some of them do offer like a virtual class almost where you could um, sit and you know like do it over zoom or teams or something and then on the last day they might make you go to a specific location so that they can test you so you can write the exam and become mtcna qualified but definitely what i recommend is doing a, the official course with the trainer because they'll similar to me like run through the material with you show you everything in detail answer any questions you have and they're certified through mikrotik like they they didn't just get the trainer certificate fall out from somewhere they most of them go to like a, a mikrotik training center thing and they get mikrotik's approval to become a trainer so these guys are very knowledgeable and i can definitely vouch for them all the certifications i've done um, before learning anything mikrotik was also through trainer and it was really helpful for me to sit in those classes um, i will create a community I think maybe what we could do is um, set up like a Discord server for this as well um, so that we can chat and, you know, reach out to each other and just have a good time. But yeah, I think I'm going to conclude the stream here. It has been very fun. Uh, it, it, it wasn't as stressful as I thought it would be. So I'd like to thank you guys really, really for asking me some good questions and being a part of the stream, it was really fun. And I've actually enjoyed this a lot and I'm looking forward to doing this um, again. I'd actually like to do this maybe every week on a Tuesday evening at the same time so that we could, um, you know, <laughs> do some, some interesting stuff. So thanks so much for being a part of the stream, guys. I'm going to end the stream off now and I will upload this as an actual video for anybody to review afterwards. 
So see you guys in the next stream or the next video. Bye bye.